Hello, this is Jeff of Tal Flatermouse. I hope you're having a good day. Today we have a very unusual projectile from Tim Hamilton, the Ballistic Machinist. Tim designed and machined this special mold for making spherocons. It's a work of art in itself. As you can see at the beginning of the video, the spherocon is an unusual shape. It has a continuous surface and as you roll it along the ground, every part of the surface of the spherocon ends up contacting the ground. In other words, it's a rolling object that isn't a sphere. Now Tim, being the curious type, wanted to see how this shape would perform in a supersonic environment. These are cast out of lead and we put some markings on there so hopefully we can see them better with the high speed camera. Now one thing that really blew my mind when I went to weigh these things, they come out almost exactly one ounce. And that's actually by design because Tim made the volume of the mold one ounce using lead. Let's get out there and test them. I gotta warn you, there's gonna be a little bit of wind noise. Unfortunately, I'm human and make mistakes. Welcome back, Tau Flater folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you at the new Tau Flater site, new undisclosed shooting site. This is the Doug Henning Memorial Rifle Range that we're on today. If you don't know who Doug Henning is, pause this video, go Google him. He's quite a flamboyant character. Hey, today we're going to uh, mass accelerate some objects that Tim sent us. Tim Hamilton from Ballistic, Ballistic Machinist? Yes. Tim sent us a, a very unique round. Jeff's going to show you a little tabletop here. It's called a Sphericon. And I thought Sphericon was the evil corporation in the Avengers, but <laughs> as it turns out, it's a goofy shape that um, I don't even know how you would describe it. So instead of doing that, you need to go to Wikipedia to explain. I, I, I still, I went to Wikipedia, I still don't understand it. <laughs> well, the picture's worth a thousand words, the video's worth a million words, so Jeff's gonna show you a little bit of video here, <laughs> and I can save a million words. So uh, we're gonna mass accelerate them downrange into some different targets, see how they fly, if they fly, if they rotate. It could be the shape of the future, you know? They're good. Exactly. Houses might be sphericons in the future. That's true. Cars might be sphericons. <laughs> Spheres might be sphericons. We don't even know. So. If it ends up being an evil corporation in the Avengers, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> All right, let's get to the mass accelerator, send some of these downrange, and see what they do. See, Tess, you're going to go for a hard shot? Going to go for a hard shot because love heals all wounds. It yeah. does. That's, we, that's what we need in these times is a positive message. It sounds like a Katy Perry album. It does. Okay, I'm ready. I don't understand that at all, what happened there. It's just science. <laughs> it's so, science. I believe the round entered here next to the next to the heart, a little bit left. So we don't know why. Why is, what's coming, going on there? This is a piece of Kevlar and vest carrier coming back out of another hole. So let's take a look and see what happened with this round. Okay. There's your Sphericon. Oh, look at that. Wanting to pop out right there. Look at that. Uh, when your Sphericon pops out, <laughs> see your doctor. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Smashed up with Kevlar fiber shapes on one side and still semi fierce spherecon. <laughs> Say that five times fast. It's, it's hot. Ay, 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 ay. Semi spherecon. Oh, my. Made a nice little clean hole, though. Look at that. Just a little bit off. I think that was you, though. I think I, this I blame you. Yeah, everybody does. <laughs> um, I think this little ear right here just blasted through the hole. I don't know. We'll, we'll, maybe. Like I said, the high-speed camera. Let's take a look lie. at the instant replay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Doug. One concern I had was deformation of the Sphericon during acceleration. I ended up using a nice thick cork uh, disc underneath the Sphericon to prevent that from happening, and it seemed to work well. The velocity is around 1,400 feet per second, or around 426 meters per second. The Kevlar body armor panel worked like a you know, like a safety net at the circus, absorbing all that energy and capturing the slug. The accuracy was actually a lot better than I expected. With that unusual surface, this thing could have drifted all over the place. Come on, chronograph, do your thing. You got it strapped down for your everyone's safety now. Okay, I think it's ready now. All right, when you're ready. I'm ready. Here we go. When you're ready. I'm ready. So we had a blue happy face, aimed for the blue happy face, it hit yeah, pretty much right in there. 
That's pretty good for a oddball projectile. Tore right through it. Nice little entry hole. More of a tear on the exit hole, so not bad. Fairly accurate and... I, I'm starting to love that aluminum plate. I really do. It's pretty cool. Thanks, Ray from Visalia. Yes. That was uh, that was handy. Yeah, I like it. Look at that. I'm shining a, bl a black... Hey, stop it! This is my SOS trying to signal airplanes with this thing. The aluminum plate is 3 8 of an inch thick or about 9.5 millimeters. The Sphericon had no problem punching through it. Got to do the lead plate. All right. When you're ready, his. Okay, where? Okay, where? You got to tell. You got to make your call where you're you're shooting. I'm gonna shoot at his right eye, so the eye on your left side of your screen. Okay. What? What? Is that like a bear or something? <laughs> I don't know. It's a lead plate with a goddamn face on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we try gotcha. not to read too much into this. <laughs> okay. I'll try to watch the chronograph this time. All right. When you're ready. I'm ready. 1348. Oh, finally got one. It was a little bit low, but I mean, burrowed itself in there at a respectable distance for lead on lead. It's a lead on lead crime. Yeah. Lead People always worry about ricochets. Lead plate really mitigates that. Yeah, it absorbs everything, so. Yeah. It's like sorcery or something. Yes, something like science Just or something. Just don't go swimming with one of these in your now pocket. Now flip it around, see if there's any cracking or anything. There's a very slight bulge here. Tough to tell if that's from this earlier, but it's bulged out right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In this test, we had a little bit of backspin on the Sphericon. The accuracy was still a lot better than expected. Now, all these tests were done at 10 yards or 9.1 meters. That's what's great about this channel. You get to learn the wonderful Imperial system as you watch our videos. Okay, I'm ready. Um, in the late 90s, I opened up a multicultural strip club called Jugs of Color. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, here we go on the blue dot. Here we go on the blue dot. Okay, okay, well explain what happened there. Well, science happened. I was aiming for the blue dot. Evidently it veered off left. Tore down through the side of this jug, tore out the side of this jug. Tore out the side of jug number three. And evidently the vest caught it somewhere. We couldn't find the slug, but it threw the vest completely back onto the berm. Yeah. So it's like magic. Yeah. That's why this is the Doug Henning Memorial Rifle Range. <laughs> yeah, it's they're not it's, they're not super accurate to look at so far. I'm itching it twice. Go see me on the OG's Danger Show. We just put up a video. What, what about, is your goal? What is your goal? I have no goal. Oh. My goal is to talk about things that interest me and that seem fun for you guys to look at. So, okay. Uh, that's about it. There is no real uh, straight path that I'm headed down. You might get some gun reviews. You might get some ammunition reviews. What about like? a recipe or something you sure know. i'll do a cooking show next <laughs> so the video that we just put up that's getting some good reviews so far from the fans is about surviving in a riot because a lot of us live in uh, turbulent locations right now so go over and check it out about how to stay safe in a civil it's a long video but i it, it I, I watched the whole thing and, and, and it was really interesting well, that's because i put andy griffith in there and ron burgundy okay so watch for the ron burgundy easter eggs okay yeah, you, it's one of those videos you can put on in the background and go, uh, you know, paint the house or mow the lawn or whatever you do. Okay. So, mowing the lawn sounds about right for that video. <laughs> you can't hear it. Anyway, yeah, stop by OG's Danger Show and uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. So if I yeah, see, it's, it's, if I it's see 58,000 views on Jeff's video here and 58,000 people don't subscribe, I'll know you guys. 
Boom! No, you guys are dropping the ball. <laughs> okay. Enough about you. Enough about it's me. It's all about me. All right. Okay, how many uh, cans of snow do you think that slug will go through? Twelve. Do we have twelve? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I think it's below. more like will the slug hit the cans? Yeah, that's a better guess. Here we go. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> that was an explosion of whiteness. That was pretty good. Now we thought there was a good chance uh, he'd completely miss this target, but the Sphericon clipped the right side of the cans, going through five of the cans. There were ten in total. Overall, the accuracy of the Sphericon, the consistency wasn't too bad. Of course, you always have to factor in the human element. We're not robots. Okay, uh, I am ready. Here we go. In the clearish ballistic gel. Woo! That vest. <laughs> Woo! That vest. <laughs> Okay, I think I can see it now. So, here was our entrance hole. Looks like any old entrance hole. And then penetrated completely through, what is this, 16 inches? Yeah. 16 inch block of gel. You can see that wound track closest to the camera. Yeah. The newest one, because we tried to you put did, it You did that on left. purpose, didn't you? Well, I actually tried to move it a little left, because your clear-ish ballistic gel is all shot to hell, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, tried uh, to put it a little left where it was clean over here. It plowed right through there. Exited back here, and the vest caught it, and, and it, it, the vest was thrown about 30 feet or something. Yeah, that vest went sailing like a frisbee. Yeah. We did not find the slug out there. Not yet. There's I some... don't know if I'm going to look for it, but I'm, I'm not motivated enough. <laughs> and it's getting warm out here. It is. Anyway, clearish ballistic gel. Yeah, I'm, I promise I'll recast it soon. It takes like eight hours of, of constant. It'd be easier to make a souffle than, than to recast the ballistic gel. Let me put it that way. All you had to do was massage it. It is a pain in the butt. Folks. Sing it sweet songs. Yeah. I almost have to hire someone full time to just recast gel blocks. <laughs> all right. There you go, Tough Later, folks. If you're interested in recasting gel blocks and lead plate blocks, submit your applications <laughs> to Jeff at 1234 Walnut Street. <laughs> Anytown, USA. <laughs> and we'll be sure to get right back to you. Yes. Womp womp.